Today's passage is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. As I read through the passage, I hope that all of us will hear the voice of the living God. Speak unto all the congregation of the children of Israel, and say unto them, You shall be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. Amen. Dear my beloved church members, how you have been doing for the past week? I hope you are staying healthy and safe. Um, one of our church members last week was on her flight back to Seoul, but on her flight, she had this infection with the coronavirus and she's now in the hospital for treatment. We have to pray and let's pray for her. And that we were praying that we would not have any members of the church infected with the virus. So we feel so sad. But let's pray for our deaconess so that she can be completely healed of the virus. So please and uh, pray for her. And um, not just for our church members, but uh, due to this coronavirus, there are many people who are suffering with this infection. So pray for all these patients and the people and their families. And um, you might be staying at home or in your office and you are joining this worship service with your beloved people. So let's say uh, some greetings to your uh, people around you. So let's stay healthy and safe and let's get through this together. Stay safe and stay healthy. Let's get through this together. I know you might be missing the church so much and I'm missing you too as well. So and we are not sure how long this will continue and uh, we are now waiting and um, we also hope that um, when our kids can go back to school we might be reopen our um, church so that we can join the service um, but we will closely monitor the situation so please uh, wait until then with the spread of the coronavirus a lot of things have changed and uh, there are not many people on the streets and things are changing a lot and uh, I saw many news articles and uh, with this virus the spread of the virus some articles were telling that the environment was getting better BBC reported that early this year the emissions from cars the greenhouse gas emissions went down by 50% from last year and uh, other than that, you might have um, heard a lot of news uh, from the many outlets. And the uh, Chinese continent is now having a better air quality. And with the coronavirus, people are now visiting, not visiting the tourist destinations. And Venice is now having dolphins coming back. And people are now spending more time with their family. And um, some countries are now having like a higher pregnancy rates. Well, I'm not sure how to read these whole the numbers, but with the spread of the virus, a lot of things are changing, and that's obvious. And also, on the other hand, we can see that we were too busy so far, and um, we thought that we were working hard and living a very hectic life, but that made the environment degraded. In this sense, the spread of the virus forced us to have some break, and that can be a blessing or uh, an opportunity to take a break for the natural environment, for the mother nature. So many news media was telling that we are now having a new pattern of life, and uh, we have to have this social distancing, and that will continue at least for 18 months. That was the forecast from many people. And um, we are also hearing this term, social distancing, a lot, like a one meter or two meters. We have to keep that safe distance so that we will not be contacted or infected with the virus. And that is a very key concept to prevent the virus. And uh, on March 15th, an art director from Spain, Juan Dacan, posted a video on his Twitter. 
it was like domino and a lot of matchy sticks are lined up and each catch fire and um, as the fire starts one match stick steps out of the line and then this fire stops there so this fire just um, get out of the range and the title was this do your part and stay home it's all we can do that was the title of this video you have to do your part and you have to stay home that's all things that we can do so that's about social distancing it shows the importance of getting this social distance and that was posted on the South China Morning Post and it said this whole animated match burning video shows how social distancing can stop the spread of the coronavirus 19. So social distancing is one good way of stopping the spread of infection of the virus. And our church is also practicing the social distancing, and we are having this online worship service. We all want to have this offline worship service in the church, but we are doing this online to keep the distance and to prevent the virus from spreading further. So with this whole social distancing, we hope that the virus will be gone and we can have the offline worship service in the near future. With this social distancing, there's one thing that comes to my mind. We have to keep some distance in terms of our faith. And we have to think about this distancing in terms of what God wants us to do. So I did some um, research. So I want to share that with you today. We are having this online worship service. And um, I changed this whole frame of our um, sermon a little bit so that you can have more uh, conversations with your family. There are three things that we have to keep ourselves distant from. I would call it holy distancing. So what are those? First, it's about place. Um, God wants us to keep distance from the things that we feel safe. That's the number one. And uh, when you look at the passage of today, it's the Leviticus chapter 19, verse 2. Speak to the entire assembly of Israel and say to them, Be holy, because I, the Lord, your God, am holy. That's what he asked us to do. We have to be holy. It means we are separate from others. We are distinct from others. We have to keep some distance, distance from the whole world out there. And the Lord asking us to be holy and keep a distance from the other things out there in the world. So it's about the places that we feel safe. So we have to keep ourselves um, distance distant from the things that we feel safe. When God gave the laws to the Israelites on the mountain Sinai, he said, I am the Lord your God who brought you out of Egypt, out of the land of slavery. So he's talking about a place from the Egypt, out of the Egypt. So he is saying that I brought you out of the Egypt, separated you from the land of slavery. And that was what Abraham experienced before. So this is the way of God's working. God wants people to break away from the places where we feel safe. So the same thing goes for Israel. That's the Genesis chapter 12, verse 1. The Lord said to Abraham, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. That was the instruction from God. He asked God to leave his country. 
to get out of the Egypt and to get out of country, the people and the father's household. And when he chose Abraham and when he saved Israel, God told them to get away from the land where the places they f that they feel safe. So that's about distancing. So God is asking us to break away from the places that we feel safe. God is showing a new land and asking us to move to the new land. First, we have to get away from the places that we feel safe. We have to distance or we have to take a distance from the places that we feel safe. And we have to move to a new destination, a new place. So we try to find a destination, a new place to head for. God tells us the new place to head for, but that's not always the case because the destination is not the key thing here because he will show us the land. So when you think about the destination or in your new place to head for, that can be another place where we can feel safe and we can settle in this new land. And then God will want us take away from that place as well. So it's not just about the place. He will continue to ask us to break away from the places that we feel safe because the ultimate thing that he wants us to do is to stay in his presence, in his workings, and in his guidance. That's what he's asking us to do. And that intention of God is revealed throughout the Bible. God led the Israel people and brought them out of Egypt. That was the exodus, and he led them into the wilderness. There, a tabernacle was set up, and he showed how he was present with them, and he showed his law, and he led them to the land of Canaan. Canaan was another destination, and uh, he also showed his ruling in that land with the tabernacle and with his law and with his rulings. However, as time went by, the land of Canaan has become another place where people started to feel safe. They built a nation, and the tabernacle became a temple, and their sacrifice has become never-changing law, and Sabbath has become another law. So they started to build places where they felt safe. That was what happened to their temples. So that happened again. So God told through the prophets, Jeremiah chapter 7, do not trust in deceptive words and say, this is the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. As they stayed in the temple, they believed that God was there with them because they felt the place was safe, and that was the place they felt very familiar and they are used to. However, God was telling them they have to get away from that safe place. God always telling us that we have to separate ourselves from the others. We should not stay or obsessed with the rituals or with the temples or with the laws. We have to move beyond these things that we feel safe. That's why Jesus healed the sick and worked on Sabbath. The people of Israel and the high priest and also the Pharisees thought that the Sabbath was the law of God and there was something that they cannot do anything about. But temple, they thought that the temple was the only place where they can meet with God and their sins are forgiven. However, Jesus destroyed the temple. Jesus worked on the Sabbath and he healed and he forgave the people and Jesus challenged the people to, to destroy the temple so that he can rebuild the temple again in three days. However, this doesn't mean that we have to break down all the patterns or the frames we have. 
what God is asking us to do is to break away from the things that we feel safe and stay in the presence of God. So in this sense, we are now going through something that's really important. We used to have this worship service in churches, and we are now having this new form of worship service online. And as we are having this shift, we are now feeling the presence of God. And this online worship service should not be another pattern, another idol, or another place that we feel safe. Because God is asking us to constantly break away from the places that we feel safe. He wants us to have the distance because He wants us to rely on Him as our only ruler. So, dear my beloved brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ, we are having this online worship service and I want you to look back on your life. Where did I try to find my shelter or feel safe? What are the things that made me feel safe? And we have to break away from the things that we felt safe and now we are in this wilderness. So we are now realizing the things that we try to take a shelter from and felt safe. So I want you to take this opportunity to look back on your face. We thought that it was kind of a pattern that we come to church every Sunday. And now is the time to think about what God wants us to do in this, in this whole crisis. We used to give the offerings, and we thought that was enough. And um, we were having this pattern of coming to church and giving the offerings. And I want you to take a fresh look at what you have been doing. What does it mean to take a challenge with God? What does it mean to stay in the presence of God and the guidance of God? What is it to stay in the wilderness in the presence of God? And also the same thing goes for the volunteering. We used to do it all the time, and we've been doing it with all our hearts. But were we really feeling the presence of God while we were doing the volunteering? Was it out of our own satisfaction or our own pride or something for myself? We have to think about it as we go through these hard times. They are my church members. I think God is now leading us and guiding us to a new place coming from a place that we used to feel very safe. And uh, when we start to feel safe from that new place, we have to break away from there as well. And in the process, I want you to feel the presence and His workings. And also, I want you to feel the ruling of God. That's what God wants us to do. And also, number two, I want you to ask you to do something. Um, we also have to break away from something else. As you may know well, we have to break away from the evil conducts and unhealthy habits. They are my brothers and sisters. We have been leading a good life as a believer, but sometimes we did something that's not really faithful or healthy. As we think about or practicing this uh, social distancing, we have to think about our faith. I think God separated all the things so that we can keep distance from others, so that we can have our own um, silent time. So we have to take this as a great opportunity to practice this holy distancing. This can be a great opportunity to take more blessings from God. We have to correct the wrong during this time, and we have to break away from unhealthy, evil habits and lies and some wrong and um, evil habits. And I want you to join this whole holy distancing. God wants us to break away from the evil. As you spend more time with your family, think about having good habits and sharing good words 
and becoming a family that can please God. And we have to give up the evil and we have to choose the good things. We have to get away from the evil. We have to distance from evil and from the greed and from all the things that are not good for our health, health and also our faith. People tell that we have to cut back on things. It's time to cut back on the things that are not necessary. So we have to cut back on the things that are not good for our face. We don't buy the unnecessary or the luxury goods because we are wearing masks. We don't need to wear makeups. And uh, all these makeup goods are not really selling well these days. So it, in some sense, it's a good time to look back on our life. What matters most, and uh, we have to focus on the things that matters most. And uh, we have to cut back on the things that are not really necessary for our life. And we have to break away from them and take a distance from the things that are not really necessary for our life. And um, last but not least, there's another thing that I want to ask you to do. That's about taking a distance from time. It means we have to take a break in terms of time. It's about taking the Sabbath. Walter Bergman wrote a book titled Sabbath as Resistance. One phrase of the book says, we have to resist against anxiety. Bergman explained about the exodus of the Israel people. God led the Israel people out of Egypt. And um, he also explains what it means in terms of the Sabbath. For the author, he says, Egypt was under the power of Pharaoh. And this whole regime under the pharaoh was filled with anxiety. It was built upon anxiety and concerns. Pharaoh had this ultimate power, but the country suffered flooding from the Nile River, and they had this famine oftentimes. So that made the people worried and anxious, and they had to keep producing food to address their anxiety, and they st stored that in their storehouses. So they really worked hard to stay safe from the flooding. And they labored a lot to build the city, to build the buildings, and to build the storehouses. So farmers became slave slaves, and they became poorer, and they were really squeezed out by the people at the top. All the things started from the feeling of anxiety. And uh, God brought them out of Egypt. They were suffering under Pharaoh, and um, they were feeling constantly um, anxious, anxious, and they were not sure about what would come to their life. And uh, however, God helped them, and God brought them out of Egypt. Because the people there were so worried and they were obsessed with storing the food. However, God brought them out of Egypt and he gave them a day of Sabbath to take a break, do nothing and take a break. That was for them. Exodus chapter 20 says, remember the Sabbath day by keeping it holy. Six days you will labor and do all your work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath to the Lord your God. On it you shall not do any work, neither you, nor your son or daughter, nor your male servant or maid servant, nor your animals, nor the alien within your gates. So that was his gift to the Israel people. Like the Creator, God took a Sabbath, you have to take a rest, and your neighbors as well. Because that's the opposite of the Pharaoh's system, which causes anxiety. You have to take a rest and take a break, and you are not a slave 
to the Pharaoh's system anymore. Under the God's covenant, you have to take the Sabbath because that means a lot for theologically and politically and economically as well. They are my brothers and sisters. We do not stop working. We keep working from Monday to Friday and even Saturday and Sunday. People keep working because they feel insecure. They believe that they have to keep working to make enough money. And they have this anxiety about the future. I should be able to deal with any challenges to come. So they have to save money and make money. And they build all the storehouses as the slaves of Egypt did. However, God ordered them to take the Sabbath by keeping it holy. What does that mean? It means God will take care of um, everything. He will be the ruler of everything. We don't need to labor anymore. We don't need to be afraid because we have to put everything in the hands of God because He will take care of everything. The Pharisees and scribes didn't do that. They were obsessed with observing the Sabbath. And they thought that that was one way of staying faithful. Observing and remembering the Sabbath day was the way to stay faithful. And they didn't really feel the presence and working of God. They are my brothers and sisters. God asked us to have this distancing in terms of time. We work every day, but we have to take a break and we have to take the Sabbath so that we can have the room to feel the presence of God and feel the workings of God so that we can realize that God is the ruler of everything. They are my brothers and sisters. We are now going through a difficult time. The virus is spreading around the world. However, we have to keep distancing. And we are now taking our time to to have this worship service because we believe that God is the ruler of the whole world. And so today I told you about three things. As we practice the social distancing, we have to also practice the holy distancing. That's what I'm asking you to do. So number one, we have to break away from the things that we feel safe, from the evil. And also, we have to take away from time and anxiety. Don't feel um, anxious all the time. We have to feel safe in the arms of God. They are my brothers and sisters in Jesus Christ. We're going to have another week next week. Don't feel um, anxious and um, stay in the presence of God and put everything in the hands of God. We have to practice this holy distancing so that we can have a stronger faith in the arms of God. Let's pray. Dear our Lord of love, we praise your name who is guiding us. We want to stay in your holy presence and we want to break away from this word, evil, and the patterns of this whole face. And we want to take this distance from the anxiety and we want to be the blessed children of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.